from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Record-breaking warmth in Metro Detroit, but will these temperatures stick around? Two children, including a toddler, shot on Christmas night, and a family fight might be to blame. But we begin with breaking news in Frazier with new concerns about the sinkhole on 15 Mile Road threatening homes there. This afternoon, homeowners attending an emergency city council meeting at Frazier City Hall after 22 homes now remain evacuated. And they were told it's still going to be a while until anyone is allowed back home. And now we know the 250 foot long sinkhole will also be keeping 15 mile road between Hayes and Utica Road closed for several months. Coco McAvoy was at today's meeting in Coco. We also know now that raw sewage is being pumped into the Clinton River. You talked a little bit about that at four o'clock. Yes, that's right, Kimberly. City officials decided to do that a couple of hours ago, though they really didn't want to. But that's just one of the problems out here. There's still a lot of questions. We know that Macomb purchased these sewer lines from Detroit a few years ago. We also know that they have not been inspected for at least 10 years. But why? Who's responsible for this? And residents want to know when they're going to get some answers. Let's try to keep our, our passions low. Let's address things in a business manner. The meeting was calm for the most part, but the residents weren't afraid to speak their minds. Has anybody looked into the root cause of this? Uh, when the dust settles and the fixes are done, someone will pay a bill. I know what my water bill looks like in Fraser, and I'm not happy about it. My grandfather has cancer. He needs those appointments. He needs to see his oncologist. We can't get in and out. Frank Guido, the attorney and a family member of Jerry and Sue Albu, the residents of the home most affected by the sinkhole, also had a lot to say. All their personal belongings, all their family memories, everything's in that home. And they can still see it there as it's sinking into the ground, yet they're not allowed to go back in. And has questions about this whole ordeal. It shouldn't happen once. It does happen in places. It shouldn't happen a second. It shouldn't happen a third time. Now, residents just hope there won't be a fourth time and that there's a clean way out of this mess. Well, just take care of the emergencies and then we can do root cause analysis, you know, a little bit later. You can see that crews are still out here working to fix this mess. And a lot of residents wanted to know if the 2004 sinkhole and the work that followed had anything to do with any of this. Well, city officials say no, but coming up at six o'clock, you're also going to hear from business owners also dealing with this mess. Reporting live this afternoon, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. We'll look forward to your report coming up, Coco. And also coming up at 530, we'll be joined live by the mayor of Frazier to discuss the concerns over the sinkhole. So we'll be asking him some questions coming up again at 530. Well, there was talk of a record breaking high today in Detroit. I don't want to spoil the big moment for Andrew. Let him. Well, let's just get over to Andrew <laughs> yeah. right now. He's in for Ben, uh, but a, a warm and wet night, Andrew. Uh, that's right. Very warm out there with temps in the 50s. And you're right, Jason. We made it to 56 degrees earlier today, breaking the record high of 55 set back in the 1800s, 1888 to be exact. Still pretty mild out there with 51 up in Flint, 50 degrees for our friends around Pontiac, but Kimberly is also right. It is still wet out there. Wet conditions with rain coming down from Port Huron through Mount Clemens, the Warren area, downtown Detroit, down through Lenaway County as well. Now this rain is not going to last all night. It's mainly for this evening over the next few hours. We have drier air behind it, but a cold front as well. And behind that, lower temps. Colder air is coming back as early as tonight, so get those heaters cranking again. It's in the 40s in Chicago. But 33, one degree above freezing for our friends in Green Bay. Teens already over in Minneapolis. Right now we still have cloudy skies overhead with rain. Little fog out there as well. Visibility down to three miles. We'll talk about how low temperatures go tonight in the week's forecast coming right up. Okay, Andrew, thank you. Local 4 is following a developing story in Clinton Township where a young woman is in custody while police investigate the suspicious death of her mother. A 45-year-old woman was found stabbed to death this morning in a unit of the Washington Place Apartments on Garfield, just north of 15 Mile. Neighbors tell Local 4 the victim was in a wheelchair. Her 17-year-old daughter was taken into custody, but no charges have been filed. We'll have a live update on the investigation coming up on Local 4 News at 6. A two year old and 16 year old shot on Christmas night in Southgate and a family fight may be to blame. As Sean Lay reports, investigators say it's a miracle no one was killed. 
Police here in Southgate tell us everyone involved from the kids that were hurt to the people opening fire are all related. Christmas night, someone pulls up to this home here and starts firing into the home. Then someone comes out. That person also armed, also firing shots. This is the time where everybody you know, you're celebrating, you know, family and friends. Amy Wade woke up to gunshots late Christmas night on Agnes Street in Southgate. The mother of five immediately checking on her own kids. Scary because check my kids, make sure like no stray bullets or, you know, things like that. Her kids were fine, but two kids down the street are not. They were shot in a bizarre act of violence. This bullet hole tells the story. Police say a man, a family member, pulled up before 11 last night and started shooting into the home. A two-year-old little girl inside was hurt when one shot grazed her face. A 16-year-old girl was rushing to pick the toddler up when that same shot hit her in her wrist. Ashley Dent had just finished Christmas dinner a few doors down. I heard like 15 like 15 gunshots it sounded like. That's because someone inside the home then rushed out with a gun and started firing, hitting the first gunman in his leg. Everyone involved, police say, is a member of the family that lives here. She said that um, the grandfather came over, I guess, and uh, started shooting. He was intoxicated. Alcohol is definitely involved. Police have both gunmen in custody. Neighbors are shocked. They're very, very, very good people. Very nice, quiet, keep to themselves. They're not nothing like this, nothing at all. The 16 year old who was hit, we are told, goes to Anderson High School. I feel so bad for her, you know, and I mean, I just, my prayers are with them because I couldn't even imagine your, your child being shot. It's unfortunate, especially on Christmas. It's really sad. A medic called to the scene Christmas night later posting on Facebook that from what that person saw, he's calling it a Christmas miracle that no one was killed. In Southgate, Sean Lay, Local 4. Police tell us they will present the case to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office to see if there will be charges on both people that opened fire. A car smashed into a house in northeast Detroit this afternoon, ending up with its front end in a home's dining room. Although there was a man inside the house at the time, he wasn't injured. It isn't known if the driver of the car was hurt. Some of the shrubbery out front of the house was pushed inside along with the car. The cause of this crash, not yet known. Well, he was known for a number one hits such as Faith and Careless Whisper. Now nearly 24 hours after his sudden death, memorials to pop icon George Michael are now growing outside his home in North London. Flowers, candles, tears, and recollections of how his songs touch their lives. Mementos left by fans now fill the doorstep of the home in North London where George Michael lived, along with a makeshift memorial at the residence in nearby Goring where Michael died suddenly Sunday. I know that 2016 has been a bad year, but I know very sad for a lot of artists, but it was George Michael that got me. Absolutely devastated. Devastated. Um, as a sort of teen growing up, you know, idolised him. Michael's unexpected passing on Christmas Day at only 53 years old has left fans worldwide in disbelief. He's young to die, 53, isn't it? It's very young in a way. So this it feels like his life force has been cut short. At the local pub in Goring, where Michael was known as a regular, neighbors and fans offered a final toast. He was a very private person and, and the village respected that. And uh, we felt that that was, you know, we were very proud to have had him as our resident. Many of those visiting the memorial say Michael's music was central to the soundtrack of their lives. He was a songbook to the good times, the bad times, um, and he's brought me here today just to say thank you, George, for the music. His manager says Michael passed peacefully in his sleep. So many great hits. Aretha Franklin, who performed the Grammy winning song, I Knew You Were Waiting with George Michael, released a statement to Local 4 today about Michael's sudden death, and it reads, quote, just so unexpected and sad, a very appealing, talented, and nice person. Switching gears to sports now, and really, the Lions, what else is there at the moment? Well, Lions playing a pretty big game tonight against the Cowboys in Dallas. Four teams have clinched playoff spots in the NFC, and the Lions are not one of them. The Cowboys, who they play tonight, have the number one seed locked up. Everything's locked up for the Cowboys, so there's a chance they might rest some of their starters, which would be great for the Lions because if they win tonight, they would clinch at least a wild card spot in the playoffs, and it would also give them a shot at a first round bye. Still in the running for that if they win tonight. Earlier this week, Matt Stafford talked about all the problems you face when you play against a great offense like the Cowboys.
When you play a team that runs the ball as well as these guys do, it's you know a possibility of a low possession game. Um, you never know how the game's going to shake out, but um, you know there's a possibility for it. So um, you got to make your drives count. You got to make uh, every time you touch the ball, you got to go down there and try and get points. And now, win or lose, the NFC North title will be decided on New Year's night at Ford Field next week. And you can watch the Lions take on the Green Bay Packers with the division title on the line. It'll be right here on Local 4 Sunday Night Football. We'll get you going uh, for Local 4 News at 6. Then Football Night in America starts at 7 and coverage of the game at 8 o'clock. Kickoff should be right around 8.30. It'll be, it'll be madness. Yeah, yeah. Big, big game big tonight, but the big, the, the, all the marbles on the line for, for coming up that one. And on Sunday night. We've seen it for weeks coming. Everybody, it's going to come down it. to the Packers game. I know it. Hopefully not the same old Lions. We, we got it this year. Sure, we're, new, <laughs> we're the new Lions. <laughs> Chaos at a local McDonald's when two angry customers get violent. Ahead at five, the video that shows how things got out of control quick, fast, and in a hurry. Shoppers pack the stores for post-Christmas deals today and holiday gift returns. New tonight, we find some of the best deals at local malls. Hank? Scam artists trying to steal your money, and they're using the people you trust the most to get your attention. She said, you need to do this, Kathy. How Kathy's story could help keep you from being tricked coming right up. The new, new at six. Rattling the system. Michigan's Chief Justice wants to reform the jury duty system. How it could help you out the next time you get summoned. Plus, a controversial ban has been lifted for members of the Detroit Police Department. Why Chief Craig ended a tradition. Many of us use social media every day. It keeps us close to the people we know. That we do, but scam artists know that too, and they use it to their advantage. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester shows us what to look out for in this Help Me Hank Consumer Alert. You've heard the old saying that you can't believe everything you read. That is especially true on Facebook and other forms of social media. If someone reaches out to you with an offer that sounds too good to be true, you better be on high alert. Okay, this is the scam real. artist targeted Kathleen Breach when she was especially vulnerable. She was in a rehab facility recovering from some medical problems. She got a message on Facebook from a friend that she'd known for 15 years. She said that she got her $9,000 grant from the government. And she said, you need to do this, Kathy. She says, you really need to do it the day you get home because the funding may stop. Kathleen says she had applied for a government grant in 2014, and she'd hoped the $9,000 was connected to that application. And I thought, I could help my younger daughter, I could help my son. She was told that she'd have to pay almost $1,000 through a money grant, and then a check for $9,000 would be delivered. One of her friends thought it sounded fishy. But I said, my friend guaranteed me that I would get my check within six hours. I says, if it wasn't somebody that I knew really well, I wouldn't have done it. Kathleen sent that $1,000 to the scammer, never talking to that friend off of Facebook. That $9,000 check, as you can imagine, never arrived. I now know that people can impersonate people you've known for 15 years. Remember, scammers can impersonate your friends. They can also impersonate rock stars, celebrities, even pretend to be Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. The goal, to rip you off. I would say to other people, call a friend or a relative, a son or a daughter that's younger than you and wiser. The Better Business Bureau also telling us that most share to win posts you find on social media are in fact scams. You could end up on a list and then be targeted again in the future. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Back to you. All right, Hank. A boil water alert is over in the city of East Point on Christmas Eve. Right around dinner time, the entire city was left without water. The outage was caused by a car crash that took down power lines at the intersection of 8 Mile and Gratiot, which caused the city's water pumping station to lose power. Power was later restored, but the city issued a boil water alert. That alert was lifted just before noon. Man, talk about a weird weather day. We've been so cold for so long, all of a sudden you throw fog at us, a little warmth, a little rain. I know, and yeah. record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. That's right, and then we take it all away later on tonight because it gets chillier again. <laughs> Gee, I didn't get you anything. <laughs> yeah, right. How about a holiday season, everybody? It puts us all in the spirit, doesn't it? Hey, take a look outside now. This is the rain uh, that we're getting right now that Kimberly and Jason were alluding to. We still have some uh, rain coming down a pretty 
decent clip here in portions of southern St. Clair County, stretching into Macomb County. Here's Mount Clemens. Here's East Point and around the Warren area and downtown Detroit. The areas of yellow, that's some of the heavier rain. Now, lightning tracker is turned on. So far, no lightning associated with this. No thunderstorm activity, but we're still looking at some decent downpours from Gross Eel down through northern portions of Macomb, uh, excuse me, Monroe County as well. Now, we have a cold front off to our west. You can see it's drier back towards Chicago, so drier weather is on the way. Just got to wait till about after dinner time and certainly as we get closer to midnight, but we can expect lower temperatures as well. That's right. Colder air that I was just talking about. It comes back for tonight. I'm talking about temperatures below freezing down to about 30 here in town in our metro zone. Our south zone in your four zone weather south of Michigan Avenue 28 for our friends in Milan. Good afternoon, Adrian. You'll see a low of 28 tonight in our west zone. Make sure the heaters are working if you're watching in Brighton, Fenton, any place west of 275 temperatures in the 20s there and 20s north of Hall Road for our north zone from Romeo on into the thumb and watch out for refreezing on roadways closer to midnight and afterward. If there are any wet spots could get a little tricky late tonight and tomorrow morning, but 53 right now. If you go into the Pistons game, aha, they're taking on the Cavs after they played yesterday on Christmas Day. They got to be tired, right? We got to get a win this time. I think we will over at the Palace in Auburn Hills outside the Palace at 6 p.m. Our next hour will see 51 degrees, but by the end of the game, this is why you want to grab your favorite Pistons jacket or coat before heading out because it will be colder when the game is done. 45 right now, a little bit chillier in for our friends over in Brighton currently. 48 in uh, Dundee. That gives you an idea of how cold it will get in just the next couple of hours or so. Despite 40s out there, many of these temps still 15 to 20 degrees higher than what they were 24 hours ago. And we're still looking at visibility, some improvement, but still a little bit foggy, especially near big water, the Detroit River, some of the big lakes. So make sure you use your low beams if you run in any fog. But there are some of those lower temperatures at or below the freezing mark from Green Bay westward. So tonight, rain for now, mainly in the evening over these next two, three, four hours, then drier tonight, but colder temperatures down to about 28. That's right, 20s by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, a high temperature of 34 for your second day of Kwanzaa. Then as we go into Wednesday and Thursday, drier, but temperatures only in the 30s for highs again, which is seasonable. Uh, and then as we go into this uh, holiday weekend, once again, as we bring in the new year, Friday, 30 degrees, Chance of a rain snow mix. We're going to keep a close eye on that as we go into New Year's Eve and early New Year's Day. It's always something. You melt it all and then freeze it right back up exactly. again. That's Michigan. That's Detroit weather. That's what right. we know and love. Be careful. Andrew, thank you. Ahead at five, a family is stranded in snow while on vacation. New tonight, the mother's heroic actions that help rescuers find them. And a police officer makes good on a promise. What this student did that earned him a special Christmas gift. A police officer in South Carolina makes good on his promise to buy a teen a special Christmas gift. The officer first met the teenager a few months ago and noticed the teen was riding a worn out skateboard. Well, after speaking with his mother, the officer told him if he pulled up his grades and kept good behavior, he would get him a Christmas gift. And sure enough, the grades got better. And on Christmas morning, the officer showed up to the teen's house with a brand new skateboard. Good story like that. <laughs> Across Michigan this Monday, we're following stories from the UP and a new development in a long legal battle on Mackinac Island. But we want to start in Lansing with a lawsuit involving a woman and her refrigerator. The Michigan Appeals Court says the woman's lawsuit against Best Buy can move forward. In the suit, the Ingham County woman claims she returned home one day to find the water dispenser on her new refrigerator spraying water all over the floor. Well, she claims while cleaning up that water in another room, she fell and broke her leg. Best Buy, who installed the refrigerator, is being accused of negligence. A judge had dismissed the retailer from the suit, but the appeals court has reversed that ruling. The families of two sisters killed when their snowmobile plunged off a cliff on Mackinac Island will get the chance to have their lawsuit heard by a jury. It comes after Michigan Supreme Court rejected an appeal from Arctic Cat, the maker of the snowmobile, for the case to be tossed out. That means the appeals court's decision to have a jury decide whether the snowmobile's reverse alarm was defective will stand. The sisters died in 2010. And in the Upper Peninsula, gas service has been restored to thousands of residents following a gas line explosion at a service station. Police say on Friday, a driver crashed into a service station owned by Simcoe Energy. The crash ruptured a gas line, causing a fire and an explosion. 1,200 customers were also left without heat and gas until Saturday night. Investigators say the driver had fallen asleep at the wheel, but he did survive. New at 530.
next at 530, the mayor of Frazier joins us live to discuss the sinkhole threatening homes in his community. Christmas may have come and gone, but that doesn't mean people are done shopping. We're talking gift exchanges and major after Christmas sales. A McDonald's and green light business on the east side was vandalized by two men and the surveillance video is disturbing. Find out the unique tool these men use to smash the windows of this McDonald's. I can't believe it. I'm like, oh, wow. While all of this is going on, we'll tell you what quick thinking employees inside did to protect themselves. Next week, live from downtown Detroit, local four news at 530 starts now. Drive through chaos at a local McDonald's when two customers suddenly shatter a window at the restaurant. The two men were ordering breakfast at the McDonald's on Christmas morning when they started to argue with workers. After that argument, the two men left only to return armed with a knife and a steering wheel lock. Priya Mann is live at the McDonald's on Gratiot near Harper. Priya, what set these guys off? Well, apparently these two customers felt they were shortchanged by employees and police say the workers here tried to accommodate their concerns and the two men eventually left. But a short time later, they came back. And that's what's left of the damage they left behind. Sometimes people go overboard. It wasn't that serious. After smashing the drive through pickup window, watch as a disgruntled customer goes after the windows of this McDonald's. But that's not enough. He steps inside and starts smashing the glass door as frightened employees run away. Very shocking. I'm very shocked to hear about that. Why? Because I don't think it was worth all that. The two men felt they were shortchanged after buying breakfast at this McDonald's on Grashit near French Road on the east side. My new things could set anybody off. I mean, that, that's stupid. Just, just over some change? Really? Police say the employees tried to accommodate the men's concerns, but a short time after leaving, they came back. One was armed with a knife. The other used a yellow steering wheel lock club to break windows. You're going to use that to smash a window because you're mad? Really? Employees locked themselves in a stock room in the back until the men left. I feel real bad for them. I don't know. People need to just get right with God and stop all this because it's very ignorant. And I think there should be security everywhere. You know, security, because it stops people from doing something, you know, going to the next level. Well, apparently the owner did try to take extra precautions. This location is a green light business, which means Detroit police were watching this happen in real time. They responded quickly. The two men got away in a red four door Kia. Anyone with information has to call Detroit police. Reporting live from the east side, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya, we appreciate it. All right, well, we continue to follow that breaking news in Frazier, where we've learned the 250 foot long sinkhole threatening homes in the area will shut down 15 mile road for several months. Frazier and Macomb County officials met with residents this afternoon and revealed 19 of the 22 families evacuated will be allowed back home within two weeks, while the other three homes are too close to the collapse area to be allowed to ever return. So right now we're joined live by Frazier Mayor Joe Nichols and acting mayor Matt Himmelberg. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon to talk to our viewers. We'll just go ahead and jump right in with the questions. A lot of people remember what happened in 2004 there was a big sinkhole then. How could this happen again? Hi, Kimberly, thank you. Um, question was asked all afternoon. It was asked of the engineers that were present. We had a panel of engineers from all different fields and it's too early to determine how it could, ha could have happened again or even if it's related. Now, we also learned at four o'clock that uh, sewage is being dumped into the Clinton River. What are you able to tell us about that? How long will that last? The time is uh, obviously undetermined. It's all to do with the weather. I was notified just a uh, short time ago that the pumps had been activated, that uh, we had reached capacity. And as I said earlier today, and, and, and again, the, the panel of engineers that we assembled that are working on this night and day, uh, we planned for the uh, for the worst and we, we were working toward the best and the weather did not cooperate with us today with the uh, record temperatures, the rapid thaw and then the consistent rain um, compound those issues and of course we, the decision was made at that point and I was notified that the pumps had been turned on. Now, have, have... We'll meet with the gentleman after this 
we do this interview and see when uh, when they think we can turn these pumps off or how long they're going to have to run. Yeah, that was that's just what I was going to ask. Has the Michigan Department of Environmental Control been uh, assisting with this and helping to monitor the situation and, and minimize any overflows? Yeah, Kimberly, the MDEQ was notified um, from the onset of this uh, nine o'clock or so Christmas Eve morning. The MDEQ was uh, made aware and, and immediately brought into into the loop and have consistently been working with the engineers and, and all parties um, with regard to this. We, we are limited on time. I, I just have a couple more questions for you. A lot of people are wondering about repairs. Who's going to pay for this? How much is all of this going to cost? I know it's still very early, but any idea on that? Go for it. That question was asked at the meeting today. And um, right now, uh, with the state of emergency that I, I signed on behalf of the city of Frazier, that transferred emergency response authority to the county so they could act on our behalf. County representatives are working to sort that out, and the determination has not been made yet as to uh, who's going to pay for this. Um, it is being looked into, and I think we should, by the, the, by the next meeting, which is scheduled already, um, I scheduled that for January 9th um, at 6 o'clock at uh, City Hall again as an update, and then we have another meeting scheduled uh, January 31st as an update, and I think at that meeting, um, the ninth, we will have a lot more answers, of course, um, and that might quite possibly be one of the answers is where do we submit those claims as homeowners if we're, we're directly affected or impacted? Yes, our, our, our city will uh, keep track of all work we do. I mean, we're going to do whatever we can to help the situation, but we'll uh, figure out where we're going to go with the bills further down the road. Okay, gentlemen. Right now, we just want to get it taken care of for the residents. Absolutely, and I'm so sorry that you're having to deal with this anytime, but especially around the holidays. Sorry for you and all of the residents there. We appreciate you guys uh, for joining us and talking to our viewers, and we'll keep you posted uh, on that meeting that happens, you said, on January 9th. Thank you. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll head back to our Coco McAvoy, and she'll talk about how the sinkhole is impacting businesses along 15 Mile Road, which is another concern through all of this. Well, yeah, a lot of questions. There. A lot of questions. Hands. A lot of questions. Uh, well, we could tell a little bit by that live shot, and uh, of course, Priya holding onto that umbrella that it it's got. It's windy, some, too. It's really windy out there. Yeah, let's yeah. get over to Andrew. And it remains windy as we go through the night, and those winds are going to bring in some air with much lower temperatures. So colder air eventually blows in. For now, we're still looking at 40s and 50s out there. Here are today's numbers and we reached a record high today. 57 degrees the high for today and that smashes the old record of 55 set back over 125 years ago back in the 1800s the 19th century 1888 quite amazing temperatures right now still in the 40s and 50s 54 for our friends in Mount Clemens same thing around Warren where they're dealing with those issues with the sinkhole we're looking at 53 currently over at Metro Airport but you see 40s just off to our west colder air is not here yet it's going to arrive close to the midnight and certainly afterward the end of the rain is right here. You can see that it's much drier in northern Oakland County and also in Livingston County, but it's still quite wet over downtown Detroit and much of southeast Michigan for the next hour or two. We'll talk about it going below freezing tonight and temperatures for the rest of the week into the new year coming right up. All right, Andrew, it was not terrorism that caused the deadly Russian plane crash on Christmas Day. Today, Russian investigators said it was pilot error or a mechanical problem that likely brought down the military plane. It took off from Sochi, carrying a military choir to a base in Syria where the choir was to perform in a New Year's concert. But the plane plunged into the Black Sea two minutes after takeoff, killing all 92 on board. An investigation and search continue. Well, as he continues the transition process, President-elect Donald Trump wants to dissolve his charity, the Trump Foundation. But New York State's Attorney General says that can't happen until he completes an investigation into the foundation. Trump wants to take the action to avoid any appearance of conflict with his role as president. Experts say Trump needs to do it. It's going to be very important for Donald Trump to separate himself from his business enterprises and focus on being a good president. He has a lot of work to do. We have a crisis in the Middle East. Well, Trump injected himself into Middle East diplomacy over the weekend, calling on President Obama to veto a U.N. Security Council resolution condemning Israeli settlements in the West Bank. The Obama administration abstained, bringing a sharp rebuke to uh, from, I should say, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. 
let the holiday gift returns begin, whether it's something that didn't fit or it's just something you didn't want or Aunt Clara's taste is again horrible. For both shoppers who are looking to return gifts and shoppers looking to score some post Christmas deals, we got a lot out there. Our bargain hunter Kim DeGiulio is at Fairlane Mall with some deals you might want. After the end of a long holiday shopping season, you may never want to step foot in a mall again. But you might have to if that one gift you love didn't fit you just right. I'm going to American Eagle Outfitters to exchange. I got a couple of items that are too small. And while some people are coming to the mall to return or exchange a gift that they may have received yesterday, many people are rushing to the mall so they can get an epic sale. If I find a good one, I'll, you know, jump on it. Stores are eager to make room for next season's merchandise, so the sales offered the day after Christmas are some of the best sales you'll see all year. Stores like Bath and Body Works advertising goods for up to 75% off. At almost every store, you'll see a sign advertising an after Christmas sale. The lotion now is uh, like three dollars, three thirteen. You know, it's very nice. You know, very nice uh, uh, price. Before there was a twelve twelve dollars each one. So are you gonna? Are you buying in bulk or anything? I buy almost uh, eight pieces right now already. From buy one get one free to a huge percentage taken off the original price. I know I can get it from Macy, Penny's, and um, any other place that have a little sale sign. We just check them in, you know, and see what they have. But if you're looking to give your bank account a rest after too much holiday spending, you may want to stay away from the malls for the next couple of days because some of these sales are just too hard to resist. I'm hoping not to have to spend anything else. I'm hoping to just get in and out, but I know that there is good deals. I do know that. Reporting at Fairling Mall in Dearborn, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. I do love you some post Christmas sale hunting. I do. You can get like a uh, gift wrapping paper for next year, ornaments for next year, and you know, you'll be set already. Yeah, once you wrap your mind around thinking about next year, you can really <laughs> scoop it up. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what I have to do. <laughs> uh, well, it's been a wet one around Metro Detroit today, and it may have changed your plans a little bit. But they did dampen the enthusiasm of those taking part in the Hanukkah celebration of the menorah parade that started just within the past hour or so in Oak Park. The annual parade started started with menorahs on top of vehicles and the parade went through Southfield, Birmingham, Bloomfield Hills and Bloomfield Township. Hanukkah recalls the rededication of the second temple in Jerusalem when there was only enough oil to light the menorah for one light, but it miraculously burned for eight days. Still ahead on Local 4 News at 530, the University of Michigan has a new viral star. And he's only three years old. How about that? What he did at a Florida hotel that has Wolverine smiling and maybe Jim Harbaugh thinking about a little early recruiting. A homeless man brought to tears the holiday gift he received by complete strangers. He never saw it coming. And a family left stranded in the middle of a winter storm during a vacation at the Grand Canyon. What the mother did that saved her family. New at six. And imagine this, you get up, you try to make your grandson some breakfast, but instead a car plows through the front of your own home. As soon as we stepped in the, uh, the kitchen, heard a loud boom. I'm Nick Monticelli, more from Clara Johnson and how a car ended up in his home and what's going to happen next. Having a tough time tearing your kids away from their technology? I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge, tonight in Good Health. Some practical family rules to keep screen time under control. A family on vacation at the Grand Canyon becomes stranded in snow after some very nasty weather moved into that area. Hank Winchester joins us with a story and how the mother hiked 26 miles to get help in harsh winter conditions. It was a vacation gone bad, but as you will see, thankfully, there's a happy ending for a family in Arizona. Eric and Karen Klein and their 10 year old son were sightseeing near the Grand Canyon when winter weather set in. I don't think they realize that Grand Canyon National Park is actually closed. Karen's identical twin sister, Kristen, says the family got off track when their GPS stopped working and their car ran off the road. Without any cell service, the only option was to walk for help. An experienced outdoorsman, Karen, set out first, trying to reach the highway several miles away. She had a winter coat on, a winter hat and gloves, but she just, she didn't have winter boots. Kristen says when Karen reached the highway, it was closed, so she kept going. 
hiking nearly 26 miles overnight. What kept her going, what she said, is that she didn't want her mother to bury her daughter. She didn't want her son to be without a mother. She didn't want her twin to be without a sister. So she kept going. The local sheriff's department says when Karen didn't return, her husband Eric walked until he had cell phone service and he called 911. Karen had made her way to a seasonal cabin and was rescued by a search party after hiking more than 30 straight hours. We're turning 47 next week, and so we're not 22 anymore. So in, I, I can believe that she had the mind to do it because so much of that toughness is in the mind. Karen's husband and her son are OK. She's still in the hospital in good spirits, but sore, as you can imagine. She says she's not ruling out a return to the Grand Canyon, but says if she goes back, it won't be in the winter. I'm Hank Winchester. Back to you. Well, you can bet that. It yeah. doesn't surprise me at all that a mom would do that. 26 miles. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. Unbelievable. The University of Michigan has a new poster child, and he's only three years old. This is a great story. Over the weekend, a Michigan family was checking into a South Florida hotel out of the Orange Bowl. And watch what happens when their son sees a bunch of Florida State players in the lobby. He's got so it. So cute. He's got it at three years old. The video has quickly gone viral after the father posted it on Facebook with the hashtag, hashtag proud daddy and go blue. The Wolverines take on the Seminoles Friday night. Look at him. He's got an amazing blue, too. Uh, I don't think those players for Florida State knew what to do. They're like, oh, all right. Yeah, I guess you just let them sing it. Start recruiting him now. Exactly. Oh, that rolls us into another big football game coming up. we got the Lions taking yeah. on Dallas in Arlington today. They're getting ready to take on the Cowboys. It's Monday Night Football, folks, and this one actually means a little something. It means something to the Lions, not much for the Cowboys. Right now, the Lions hold the number three seed in the NFC. But with two games left, that can change for the better or for worse or f catastrophic, really, because the offense has been shaky in the last few weeks. Offensive coordinator Jim Bob Cooter is aware of that and says it's time to get back to the basics. Not performing the way we would like to, especially last week. Didn't, didn't get as many points on the board uh, to help our team win the game. Uh, we'd like to do more of that, do that better moving forward, and I think the kind of run-pass ratio is a big part of that thing. Um, but at the same time, like I said, we're striving for balance. That's the, that's the ultimate goal. It'd be nice to have Stafford's finger feel better, too. No matter what happens tonight, the NFC North title will still come down to next week's Sunday night showdown with the Green Bay Packers at Ford Field. You can watch that game right here on Local 4. We'll have much more on Monday Night Football coming up at 6. The AFC North was decided last night in one of the best rivalry games the NFL has to offer as the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Baltimore Ravens 31-27. Pick it up the fourth quarter. Ravens were down, trailing 4-4, four by four, handoff. Up the middle, Kyle Juszczyk. Look at the guy, bowl guys over, dives for the end zone. Baltimore up by three, but when you got a guy named Roethlisberger, it's never over, finds Antonio Brown, and that was only with nine seconds to play. Pittsburgh was out of timeout, so if he could stop, that could have been the ball game. Reaches over, it's a touchdown. Steelers clinch a playoff berth in the AFC North crown. There you go. Mentioned this earlier, by the way, the Wolverines are in Miami getting ready for the Orange Bowl. They'll take on Florida State on Friday. Seminoles are led by their star running back Dalvin Cook. So Michigan's defense is going to have its work cut out. And that means one thing for senior Maurice Hurst. Practice hard. We call it Christmas camp. So, I mean, it's definitely a grind and uh, it's very physical and uh, definitely a time to get better at football and, and improve. Not really seen as just another game, it's, it's really seen as a start of a almost a new season. Sometimes you just the head coach's mentality trickles, just trickles down. down. That's what oh, it seems yeah. like. It's going to practice hard. <laughs> <Yep>. Mentality. <laughs> Got to have a good mentality. Drink whole milk and eat steak. That's great. That's great. Oh, that's Jim, what leadership is all about. Yeah. Back to that little boy singing Hail to the Victors. Oh, right wasn't away. that so cute? 
Early admission for that kid. He's already a Michigan Warrior. Right. Put him in school already. At three years old. I think they're <laughs> recruiting him for something. <laughs> yeah, he's got the song down, Pat. Hey, let's look at your forecast. Speaking of sports, Pistons in action tonight over in Auburn Hills. Temperatures go from the 50s where they are now into the 30s by game's end after the Pistons play the Cavaliers. Right now we still have rain moving through, so be careful if you're venturing out now, whether it's over to the Pistons game or Kwanzaa celebrations. It's drier now in Auburn Hills, and the rain continues to move away. Light rain in places like Troy, but heavy rain farther to the east closer to Mount Clemens. Same thing over the city of Detroit and farther to the south. But the wider view shows we have dry weather on the way just off to our west after this cold front passes. At the same time though, it becomes chillier, colder, windier starting tonight. You can already feel those breezes out there and you can sense those temperatures getting ready to fall later tonight. Well, here's how low those temperatures go tonight with clearing skies, especially after midnight gets down to 28 degrees below freezing. So make sure those heaters are working and wind chills even lower by tomorrow morning because it will still be windy, probably feeling like it's in the teens going back to work and back to school for some, mainly going back to work for many folks. 34 for a high tomorrow. Notice it remains chilly for the rest of the week. Highs in the 30s, lows in the 20s, through Wednesday and Thursday, Friday, while Michigan players are down in Miami, will enjoy 30 degrees while we're inside warm and toasty watching the bowl games. Saturday and Sunday, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, 30s and 20s with a chance of a rain snow mix. Look at the fog from earlier today. This Whoa. is your weather window brought to you by 1 800 Hansons. That's real? Yeah, it's real. Time lapse of the fog that was wow. drifting in and out of Detroit and much of southeast Michigan. Absolutely amazing to see. If it's still foggy in your neighborhood while you're driving, Use those low beams. Yep. Absolutely. Good tip. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Andrew. Still ahead, a church service accidentally hands out a booklet containing a profanity laced rap song. What happened when the priest realized his mistake? But first, a homeless man brought to tears what he was surprised with on Christmas next. Did your kids get high tech gadgets for Christmas or maybe something that requires them to be on the internet? If so, there's a chance it's leaving them exposed. Tomorrow at 6 a.m. in my Help Me Hank Consumer Report will reveal how parents can protect their children. Plus the weather changing yet again. Wake up with us for weather and traffic on the fours starting at 4.30 a.m. Get the 20. A homeless man in Mesa, Arizona, got a Christmas gift he just could not believe. Doug Davison and his dog Suede were living in a broken down car, but Doug did not look for any handouts. But Dan and Lisa Kelly got to know Doug and put him in a motel on Christmas Eve. Well, then they took him to breakfast Christmas morning, and then they gave him a present of a minivan in good working order. We went inside and ate, and Dan asked me, can you drive? I'm like, yeah. He said, well, turn around. I turn around and look. He's like, don't you see him? Like, see what? He's like, the van over there. I, I lost it. Oh, wow. Well, the minivan was also stocked with clothes, blankets, and toys for Suede. Dan and Lisa Kelly say they are content with the life they have. They say their gift to Doug and Suede was also a gift to themselves, and it makes them very happy. I bet it did. Yeah, that's great. You know, Tupac Shakur was recently inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, very rightfully so, but that doesn't mean his music is appropriate everywhere. Over the weekend, one of his songs made a very surprise appearance at a carol service. At a church in Sri Lanka. They accidentally printed the lyrics to Tupac's Hail Mary in the booklets they handed out. When the carolers looked at the lyrics, many thought it was a joke. The priest said it was an innocent mistake made by a younger member of the church who simply downloaded the wrong version of the song. Oh, so on Mother's Day, they maybe print up Dear Mama. Oh my goodness! Have another no. problem. Can, can you imagine? Uh, that, that's the younger generation. Maybe they yeah. just kind of looked at it and it's Hail Mary. Yep, Hail Mary. Here you oh. go. Yep. It's there. Local 4 News at six is next. We're following stories from Southgate, Westland, and Detroit. But first, over to Clinton Township. Priya. Neighbors in a quiet Clinton Township community are shocked after the body of a woman was discovered and police say it was a suspicious death. We'll have the latest on the investigation. Plus, a sinkhole has led to a state of emergency in Frazier, forcing families out of their homes. How that sinkhole situation is impacting businesses coming up.